the great Bobby Rydell, and he's still performing at a, a grand old age of about 87. That goes back to 1960. Um, yes, I was knee high to a grasshopper. I don't really remember it in those years, but um, nor does Mona, nor does Madonna, but uh, <laughs> it's a great track. Now, Mona, let's, let's just trip back to um, Oslo, Norway, and um, you were trained as a audio... Audiologist. Audiologist, yeah. yes. And that would be, I guess, a three-year course. Um, look, at the time it was very different. So you had to actually work at the... I had to work at the... I worked at the University Hospital at the Audiological Laboratory. And we didn't actually have our own school. We went to different um, hospitals and parts of the universities to, to get all the courses together. Yeah, look, I've only been in Norway once, but I tell you, very progressive country, fantastic country, and I dare say the research and medical um, standards would be extremely high. Um, yes, I've been a little bit out of touch the last few oh, years, yeah, as I've been here would. for 24 years. Um, but, um, yeah, they, they have a different system than what we work under here. Uh, but... Uh, it's sort of a small industry worldwide, so every um, professional has to, to do development and training throughout their career. So um, it really happened very rapidly, so it's a lot to learn all the time. Yeah, and I, I imagine the great thing these days is that because there's so much research going on, that's just sort of, I would imagine in such a small industry, that would spread like wildfire once one, you know, once the research is released, that gives you more information about how you can help people and what you can do. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's very fast. Yeah. <laughs> this, this press release you got, um, it's rather frightening. You want it to go is. through that with us? Yeah, this was just actually the 2nd of March from the Minister of um, Aged Care, uh, Ken Wyatt. Uh, and um, yes, it's a um, good thing that he is worried as well, uh, because um, as he also pointed out, it's also for our, our emotional well-being. Uh, it's very isolating not to be able to, to hear and participate in interaction with other people. And it may actually cause people to get dementia um, uh, and depression. Uh, sorry, it caused them to get um, depression when they can't interact. Uh, but also with um, dementia, they, they reckon it can increase by 20%. Um, yeah. What I have Scary. heard yeah. is, is very documented research saying that if you are prone to dementia or starting to have dementia and you have a hearing loss and you don't wear hearing aids, um, the dementia process is going to be faster. Snowball. And people might actually misconstrue the hearing loss for the dementia, couldn't they? Like if I'm talking to someone with, you know, the beginning of dementia and they're not hearing or comprehending, I could assume it's a dementia rather than assuming it's partially hearing loss. So it might end up really impacting the way your family and friends communicate what with you as well. What causes dementia? That's, that's the big question. What causes it? Is it diet? Is it hearing loss? Well, I'm sure it's all connected. Knocks to the head in, yeah. in sport. Yeah. Because people think, oh, I hear with my ears. Yeah, the sound's picked up by your ears, but it's all processed in your brain. Yes. So, um, you know, you keep your brain active by having to process all the sounds and of course, you had a hearing loss for a while, and we give people a hearing aid. And yeah, they want to hear what their kids or grandkids say, but they don't really want to hear the fridge turning on and off or the traffic down the street. That's part of everyday life. And the brain needs to be retrained to sort of go, OK, that's just some annoying rattling paper, but I'm not interested. I want yes. to hear so, so it takes takes a lot of time and effort. So even with hearing aids, aid. like that's the sort of thing that bit by bit the brain goes, okay, that's less important, that's less important, I'll focus on the conversation. That's what you need huh. to re retrain the brain to do. Yeah. yeah. So without the hearing aids and the hearing is going down gradually, according to your brain, well, that's normal, that's normal for me. Yeah. So we're changing normal. So it takes a lot of counselling and practice to, to get all this as well as we can again. And you can do all that? 
and that's what we spend a lot of time <laughs> doing uh, training. doing yeah yeah counseling explaining i believe the more people understand what happens uh, the more likely they are to succeed with hearing aids. Man, I, I, look, you're a tall lady, a bit like your neighbour Ingrid Bergman from Sweden. She was a tall <laughs> lady. But have you ever found, and um, I'm six foot four, but you're at a party, it's noisy, there's music, and people are having a conversation around your navel. Do you, do you miss a lot of the words? Because the, the conversation's down there. Uh, well, not about your navel, but uh, well, hot air rises uh, does sound. <laughs> um, well, I'm not that tall, so it's not really a big problem. Um, but I think in a situation like that, it's more the background noise, yeah. and, and as we get older, it is harder to pick up the well, conversation. Yeah, the the processing of the sound also become a bit slower as we get older. Now tell me um, something we hear about a lot, tinnitus. Yes. Fairly common, isn't it? And it there's is, not much that can be done. It is fairly common. There is not a lot that can be done. But there is certain, it's, it's always research. There has, to my knowledge, not any good answers to it. You can have retraining program, you can have tinnitus maskers. But in my personal um, experience, probably about, say, 60 to 65 percent at least that have a hearing loss and have tinnitus by wearing hearing aids. Well, they reckon nearly and, 70, 17 to 20 percent of Australians um, suffer tinnitus. Yeah. So with the ones that have a hearing loss, wearing hearing aids, as I said, probably about 60 to 65 percent find an improvement by wearing hearing aids. Hmm. Also, most hearing aids today can uh, have a tinnitus mask in there as a program that we can put yeah. in. So that if if it's really disturbing, we can send a sound in there. It can be the sound of the ocean. It could just be a white noise, but something to distract it. Hmm. It's amazing. Because yeah. I, I know a couple of people who do suffer it, and um, they're a bit younger than me, but uh, it's, it can drive people absolutely crazy. Yeah. Yeah, with, within the natural therapies world, I think uh, there's a lot of research going on with tinnitus in relation to things like curcumin, you know, the activated curcuminoids and that sort of thing, anti-inflammatory, you know, from uh, turmeric and that type of thing, as well as there's a lot of research that's been done on a herb called black cohosh, once again, it's a bit of an anti-inflammatory. Well, there's and a misconception that it was a disease, which it isn't. What, what is actually happening, and we do spend time explaining to people if you can demystify it a bit. Um, and, you know, it's, it's actually nerve cells in the brain that, that, that when, when they sort of die out, and it's in a way the body compensates for what's there. So sometimes, I don't know if it's a good example, but sometimes I explain, like, you know, people have an arm amputated, which I have no personal experience no, of, they want to. but they can still feel their fingers yes. and things like that. Right. So there is sort of a similar thing happening in the brain. Of course, sometimes tinnitus can have a medical reason for it, so that needs to be investigated. Because um, it can be the little bones... Uh, uh, vibrating. They they might, but that's not the most common okay. reason. Yeah. But in extreme cases, you could have a brain tumor that could cause it, which is you know very very rare. Right. But you would want to investigate other yes. things if you have other complaints. But mostly, it's just little nerve cells dying, and and hmm. they're not there. So it's then the counselling is the important part to maybe teach people. Uh, ways to live with it, like if people say I can't go to sleep, uh, sometimes if you just have a little sound source in the old days, we would say a little radio, and of course they have all the other stuff, but I used to say just put a little radio next to your, to your bed and maybe just slightly off station, just so that you can know. hear it as a noise in the yeah. background. Which may override, Drowns out might, that, yeah, yeah. Might, might help you go to sleep. Amazing. Mona, we'll come back in a moment. We're chatting with, of course, Madonna Guy of um, Bay Health here at Bay FM and special guest Mona Sunda, who's a audiometrist. And, um, we're